In this video, I will talk about the 17 and a half inch rule. And there's also a 25 inch rule. And both of them are about the same. So I'm just going to focus on the 17 and a half inch rule. And it's basically a rule of thumb that people used to use to design stairs. And I'm not about to suggest you can't use it today. So what you're going to do is just simply add the height of the riser and the depth of the tread. And if that comes out to be 17 and a half inches, which is what it would be right here, then you've got a good set of stairs. Now it doesn't have to be 17 and a half inches, just as long as it's close to it. So for example, if I had a seven and a quarter inch riser or a seven and three quarter inch riser, I'm only going to be a quarter of an inch off in my measurement unless I increase or decrease the width of the tread. And you can actually do it if you want to, if you're a firm believer in this rule. I am not. I used to be. But in reality, there are some stairways that this won't work with. Now, this won't be one of them. Six and a half inches and 11 inches should provide most of you with a comfortable step. And I hate to use the word average here. People who are taller or shorter, older or younger, might have a difficult time using the 17 and a half inch rule as a standard rule of thumb to create a comfortable stairway. Here's one that it might not work as well on, where we have a four inch riser and a 13 and a half inch step, because this stairway might not work good for larger or shorter people. For example, this stairway might have a better riser height for a shorter person, but the length of the tread will be a little too long, whereas a larger person might like the length of the step, but won't like the height of the riser. And then if we shorten the step and raise the height of the riser, again, we still have 17 and a half inches here. Yet we've just created a stairway where the riser height might be a little more difficult to use for shorter people. And the width of the step might be a little more difficult to use for people with larger feet. However, if we increase the depth of the steps to 11 inches, and we have an 8-inch riser, we could end up with a more comfortable step, but definitely a safer step. For larger people, again, someone who's going to have a larger foot and won't have to walk up the stairway on their tiptoes. And I can provide you with a variety of different examples, but by now you should get the point. This is a general rule of thumb that will work sometimes, but it won't work all the time. Next up, let's take a look at a few things you need to think about when designing a straight stairway for a two-story house. And the first thing on that list will be how much room you have. Will the stairway actually fit into the space based on your local building codes? And this would include using the maximum riser height and the minimum tread depth measurements. So the first thing I want you to do will be to figure out what those building codes are. And one of the more common building codes for a residential two-story house will be a 10-inch minimum stair tread. However, yours might be 11 inches or it might even be 9 inches. And as far as the riser height goes, that's usually going to have a maximum of seven and three quarter inches. However, it might be eight inches in your area or even shorter than seven and three quarter inches. So these are the two measurements you need to validate. Then you can do all of the necessary calculations to figure out how long the stairway is going to be and whether or not it will actually fit into the desired location on your building plans. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at wall locations, floor heights, and again, more minimum or maximum building coats. There will usually be a minimum width between the front of your stairway and a wall or other parts of a building that will force you to either create a shorter stairway or relocate the walls. And most of the time you're not going to be creating a smaller stairway. And this is a big problem for some of our viewers. They want to design a stairway that's going to fit into a particular space without using building codes that were created with your safety in mind. So if you have a situation where 
the only way you're going to be able to build a safer stairway, maybe even remodel an existing stairway to make it safer, then just keep in mind that the stairway is usually going to need to be longer if it's a straight stairway. You can always turn it by putting some winders in or a landing. However, that could create problems for the headroom or the floor space above. And I will address that issue in another video. So in the real world, not the fantasy world, if you need a longer stairway and a minimum space between the front of the stairs and the wall located on the lower level, then you might need to move the wall back further. And this could create smaller rooms on the other side here, especially in an existing house. Or you're going to have to move the stairway, and in some cases, structural framing components and concrete footings in the opposite direction to make it work. And this video would not be complete without mentioning the second floor, the upper level floor, and the stairwell, or the headroom height. There's also going to be a minimum measurement for your headroom height to prevent people who use the stairway from hitting their head on the ceiling. And this is probably the most overlooked design flaw made by do-it-yourselfers and even professionals. I can't tell you how many times I built a stairway with a headroom problem. And that's usually not where this problem ends. It's not uncommon to have a wall located over this section of the opening. And if you need to move that section of the opening back to increase the headroom height, then there's a good chance you're going to have to move this wall. And if you move this wall, you might have to move this wall. And in some cases, you will need to move the walls in the other direction. Again, this can create problems for the rooms that are either already small or cannot be shortened because of other building code requirements you might be dealing with also. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up by simply suggesting to all the viewers out there, I don't care what country you're in, make sure that you check with your local building department, building and safety department, and it might have another name, but these are usually going to be government municipalities. That can be found by contacting your local city, state, county, province, whatever it is in your country, who controls all of the building permits, where the building inspectors work, and where all plans like yours will need to be approved if your property falls within their jurisdiction. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.